Through much of seven decades, families made the trek to San Marcos, Texas to take in the wonder of Aquarina Springs, a theme park built around clear, beautiful Spring Lake. Though the theme park is long gone, remnants of its past remain, and today, we're going to find it. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past. Our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're gonna find it. Expedition Texas, presented by JMT Music Entertainment. See your favorite artists live in concert. Find shows near you on Facebook at JMT Music Entertainment. In 1926, A.B. Rogers purchased 125 acres surrounding Spring Lake with the dream of creating what he called a first-rate Texas tourist destination. The Spring Lake Park Hotel was the first building built on the property. In 1946, glass-bottom boats were launched in Spring Lake and visitors could now see the wonderland beneath the water surface. In 1951, the submersible Submarine Theater made its debut, featuring Aquamaids and Glurpo the Clown. The aquatic performances won the hearts of visitors and became a mainstay of the theme park for decades. In 1969, Ralph the Diving Pig was introduced and became famous for his aquatic antics. There was also a Swiss-designed gondola skyride that gave guests an unprecedented view of the springs from above. The theme park closed in 1996. The park had its problems. Some people feared that the dam holding Spring Lake would break. Not only was the old theme park infrastructure built on a known floodplain, it also used outdated and hazardous materials such as asbestos and lead paint. Floodwaters sank the old submarine theater and damaged other park infrastructure in 1998. In 1999, Texas State University entered into a contract with the Army Corps of Engineers to restore Spring Lake to its original natural condition. The submarine theater was removed, as were many of the other theme park structures. Our guide, Anna Huff, agreed to show us the remnants of the colorful past of Aquarina Springs. So today we're going to start off on a glass bottom boat tour. So do I understand correctly there's even remnants of Aquarina Springs that you can see under the water on the tour? Yes. We have remnants from the submarine theater. The submerged man-made attractions are what brought us to Aquarina Springs, but it wasn't only those man-made items that brought tourists here back in the day. These cypress trees date back to 350 years, and they were here when Aquarina was here, and they've stood the test of time. They're beautiful. Yep, they're pretty majestic. All of our glass bottom boats are named for in which the year that they are built. And today we're gonna to be taking a ride on our oldest boat in our fleet, which is 1945. 1945, so I imagine when we get on here, you're gonna tell me a little bit about the history of this place. Oh, absolutely. I guess I'll start with the very beginning. In 1849, General Edward Burleson actually acquired this area at the headwaters. And he built a cabin with his two sons the next year and built a dam, which created what we now know as Spring Lake. And that's what we're in now, yes. Spring Lake, okay. Yes. So the water's very clear, uh, and I noticed that on the boat here we have a glass bottom where we can see everything under us. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Rogers was the brainchild for these boats in Spring Lake, and A.B. Rogers, his father, bought uh, this headwater, 125 acres at the headwaters in 1926. And in 1929, they actually built this uh, Spring Lake Park Hotel, which is now our offices for the Meadow Center. part of the submarine theater. It was actually 80 feet long by 6 feet wide. Uh, that was built in 1950. We're in
We're in San Marcos, Texas, exploring what remains of Aquarena Springs, a once fabulous theme park that was built around mermaids, water exhibits, and a swimming pig. The park drew visitors from all over the country, including some of our very own Expedition Texas crew. Our segment producer, Chris Moore, sent us this video after the shoot, sharing some of his memories. So I guess I was probably about five or six when uh, mom and dad decided to take us to Aquarena Springs. And I think the memory I have the most about uh, visiting the, there uh, when I was little was uh, Ralph the Swimming Pig of all things. And looking back, it was silly. It was probably just a, a simple pig swimming, but they made such a big deal about it. They had this underwater theater uh, that was really neat. They had mermaids there. The seats would actually be above water and throughout the show, they would go down below water. And Ralph would come out on this fake uh, volcano and uh, he would do the, the swine dive, if I remember right, is what they called it, and jump in off of a diving board into the water and then he'd swim and do tricks. And as a five or six year old, that was just fascinating to me. I thought it was one of the coolest things I had seen. And then the, the mermaids that were in the, the underwater setting, they were eating a picnic lunch. I was fascinated. How were they eating a meal underwater? Those type of things. It was just something that they made it a really special event, especially for young folks. I remember the uh, glass bottom boats. Uh, those were always neat. I remember being able to see all the way down to the bottom through the water and it was really neat to see all the fish swimming around. But um, Aquarina Springs was just a, a special place. It was one of those places for kids especially uh, that it just sticks in your memory. It's something you'll never forget uh, and it's something that that is missed today as, as it's um, gone on and into the past and into our memory, but uh, definitely something that was a special place and will always hold a special place in my memory uh, of good times I had there with my family. And our cameraman Jeff Miller was there for the shoot and has some great memories of his own. I will always remember and never forget the fascination that I felt uh, traveling around Spring Lake in the glass bottom boat looking down through the glass and seeing the amazing aquatic life and the springs and the the fissure that's down there the the various things it brought back a lot of memories i remember the mermaid show uh the beautiful girls that would uh, swim underneath the boat i was just fascinated by the fact that they held their breath for so long and yet they looked wonderful and the show was was great uh, and of course the the diving pig uh, I don't have a clear memory of that but I do kind of recall that that was going on as well um, but shooting uh, our show there at Aquarina Springs really brought back some great, great memories about uh, traveling and I wish that was still a, a an open amusement park. It's uh, kind of sad that it's not, but very encouraging that the university has taken over that property and is using it as a research facility and a um, and an aquatic preservation uh, facility as well. I'm really glad that they're doing that. It's it's really a fascinating place to visit. I'm glad we went there. I'm hoping that we can return sometime soon and see more of the uh, old Aquarina Springs Park. And now getting back to our tour of the park, we continue in the glass bottom boat with Anna. I'm noticing along the banks here, it looks like remnants of the, some concrete chunks that were something. I don't know, what was that? Yes, this would be part of the submarine theater. It was actually 80 feet long by six feet wide. It would hold about- Submarine theater? Yes. Wow, tell me about that. How did that work? So the submarine theater was built by a Swiss engineer who worked at Marine Studios Incorporated, a company out of Florida. And uh, the submarine theater, it would hold about 125 people. So what they would do is you would enter um, on land and you would go down into the submarine theater. Okay. And you would start out above water and they would have a ballet performance on a stage that was across, uh, across the lake. And then after that was done, yeah, they, um, I think it took 15,000 gallons of water. They would submerge the uh, submarine theater 42 feet down. Really? Uh-huh. And they would have Aquamaids and uh, Glurpo the Clown and all sorts of underwater performances. And that's all gone now? Yeah.
We're in San Marcos, Texas, exploring what remains of Aquarina Springs, an aquatic theme park built around Spring Lake. Our guide is Anna Huff, and she's showing us around using one of the old flat bottom boats there. So this structure over here was actually an old observation deck for Ocarina Springs, and folks who were waiting to take the ferry across the lake, they would sit up and look at the beautiful view from above of the lake. Now tell me about why there was a ferry. Yes. So initially, um, Paul Rogers built a Swiss sky ride, and why they called it Swiss, they also had a Swiss engineer for that structure too. Um, it would take folks from one side of the lake to the, to the other to take a glass bottom boat ride. Sounds like fun. Right. Yeah. But it was, you know, hundreds of feet in the air and a lot of folks aren't too keen on heights. Right. So he decided to build an alternative and so they had a ferry boat. So this area um, is our largest group of springs on the lake. We call it cream of wheat and it's a bunch of low pressure springs. And you'll see some high pressure springs here in a little bit. And that's just water bubbling out of the ground into? Yep. Wow. Yep, straight from the Edwards Aquifer. And so these tree, lim tree limbs are pretty cool too. So whenever uh, Burleson built the dam that made Spring Lake, uh, a bunch of the trees that, that you know, eventually got underwater, um, they've been here for hundreds of years now and eventually they'll turn into stone. Okay, so the area over here that is now our um, dive barge used to be Pirate's Cove Landing, and folks who would take the ferry boat would end over in Pirate's Cove before their glass bottom boat tour. So this dock that you see over here um, would be another place where visitors of Ocarina Springs would come hang out and be by the water. Um, this would also be another launching point for the, for the ferry boat. And what's this here? So over here is our kayak launch. Um, we partner with REI and they come out and do tours for us. But it used to uh, be a sculpture garden. So Buck Wynn, he's a famous artist from Wimberley, Texas, which is just right down the road. He designed these rainbow fountains that, um, that were located right over here whenever Aquarina Springs uh, was running. So what happened to those now? So now they're actually resting with the family um, on their property in Wimberley, Texas. Oh, cool. So you can still see a little remnant of Ocarina Springs, but it's at someone's house now. Yes, yes. They still get to um, enjoy it for, for themselves. What is that? So this is an old pipe from the submarine theater. It would uh, push water to help the submarine whenever it was um, sinking down to watch the underwater performances. And uh, some of our archaeologists and biologists who have been diving in here have actually found Texas blind salamanders coming out of this pipe because it, it connects underground to the underground aquifer. And the Texas blind salamanders are one of our um, eight endangered species that, that live here. So in the late 1960s, they added a volcano to the submarine theater performance and all the Aquamaids were part of a native village. This is the opening to it right here? Yes. Would they get down in there? No, the, the volcano was above, above water. Above, oh, so this was, used to be above ground, or above, yes. above water. Yes. <laughs> so all of this that was here, the volcano, the submarine theater, uh, the observation deck, all this stuff was part of a theme park, an amusement park uh, type of setting. What happened to it? Why did it go away? It seems like it'd be such a fun place to go. Yep. Well, Six Flags, SeaWorld, a bunch of the big, big time amusement yeah. parks kind of came into Texas and they weren't, you know, getting as many visitors as they used to. And the Rogers family in 1985 sold this property to a private individual. And then in 1994, Texas State took ownership of it and made it part of their campus. And with that, many of the park's most prominent features, the observation tower and even the submarine theater were removed to make way for the park to be returned to nature. But the resort hotel that was on the property remains and coming up next, we're gonna head inside. This was actually the lobby. Uh, it's now used as a conference room, but this is actually the original floors that guests would walk on whenever they entered the Spring Lake Park Hotel.
We're in San Marcos, exploring what's left of the once fabulous amusement park known as Aquarina Springs. The park is long gone, but we've been finding remnants of it as we've explored using one of the original glass bottom boats that the park was known for. What we're looking at right now is Texas wild rice. It's one of our endangered species that you can find in Spring Lake, and it's actually found nowhere else on Earth. And our biologists um, come out here and plant wild rice in Spring Lake and also the upper San Marcos River um, to keep it thriving and protect the species. So this wetlands area over here, we can't really get to that, but uh, because you say it's very shallow, how shallow is it over there? Yep, it's anywhere from three inches to um, six or seven feet. And I guess uh, no real warning that you're coming up on a three inch seg section whenever you can't really see right, through all of that exactly. marsh. And just right around the corner is um, the actual General Burleson's Dam that was built in 1849. Wow. Now it's time to dock the boat and explore one aspect of the original park that is almost completely intact, the original Spring Lake Park Hotel. So in here is our Discovery Hall. Um, it's where we have exhibits and lots of aquariums. And here we have our threatened and endangered species that are only found right here in Spring Lake. Cool. Yep, this lets visitors get an up close view of what they might normally not ever get to see. So this is the Texas blind salamander. And these were actually um, caught in the big submarine pipe that we saw in the lake earlier. And um, they're blind as, they're not, as their name would you know, tell you and they're found in the Edwards Aquifer. Okay, so uh, what is this display here? So this is our San Marcos salamander display. So San Marcos salamander, you have your own, huh? Yes, we do. <laughs> Why are they called the San Marcos salamander? Uh, this is another species that really is just found right here in Spring Lake and the upper San Marcos River. And why they're in, this, um, in these beads is it's actually mimicking their natural habitat. So they live in this like rocky uh, substrate and lay their eggs down here actually too. And they like being cramped up like that, I guess. Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our archeology span exhibit. And here you'll find some of the artifacts that Joel Shiner and some of our own archeologists have found. And with the latest dating back to almost 13,000 years ago. Really? Yes. And we have like arrowheads. Bear here. teeth. Bear teeth. Wow. Yep. Bison teeth. Yep. Oh my gosh. And some of the tools that the Native Americans who lived here at the time would use, like uh, hand axe and scrapers and drills, and of course arrowheads. Yes. So as I mentioned earlier, um, this building used to be an old hotel, and this was actually the lobby. Uh, it's now used as a conference room, but this is actually the original floors that guests would walk on whenever they entered the Spring Lake Park Hotel. It was built when? In 1929. Really? Yes. Wow, so these, uh, these floors could uh, tell some stories. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a picture over here of the grand opening of the Spring Lake Park Hotel. Right over here. So here's our iconic Ralph photo. Well, I see why it's your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, a pig in the water. You don't really see it that often. No. <laughs> How did that become an attraction? I don't know, but um, they, they were pretty well trained and, yeah. and they ended up loving the water, so. Very cool. Coming out of the old hotel, what's really cool about uh, this place right now is that even though you can't really enjoy Aquarina Springs anymore, you still can kind of enjoy a little bit of the nature that was uh, the main feature of this place to begin with. Mm-hmm. So the Meadow Center, we're dedicated to sharing this place with the community and the students uh, at large. Uh, we're all about, you know, water research and water preservation and we love having this vital and environmentally significant resource, you know, right, right across our, our office. Though many of the popular amusement attractions from Aquarina Springs are gone, you won't find any swimming pigs or mermaids, but you can still take a ride on a glass bottom boat. Be sure to visit the Meadow Center and learn more about the research that's going on there. In the meantime, there's another lost legend waiting down the road somewhere, and on Expedition Texas, we're gonna find it. <laughs>